Castillo Muscle. Castillo Muscle of Pelvic Girdle consists of Musculus Gluteus Maximus. It starts from iliac uh, uh, bone and from dorsal surface of sacral bone and attached to tuberosity glute. Uh, function that is extension in hip joint. Musculus gluteus medius. Start from iliac bone and attached to greater trochanter. Abduction in uh, hip joint. Anterior fibers of this muscle participate in pronation and posterior fibers in supination. The same function in lesser gluteal muscle, musculus gluteus minimus, smallest minimus. The same start from iliac bone, attached to uh, greater trochanter, and uh, function is the same like in previous muscle. Musculus piriformis. This muscle start from anterior surface of sacral bone and attached to greater trochanter function. Uh, supination and abduction and this muscle it passes through great ascetic foramen foramen is here the cumulus and separate this foramen into two foramen supraperiforme and foramen infraperiforme above and below of piriform muscle next musculus obturatorius internus it starts from the borders of obturator foramen and attached in the region of greater trochanter, knee of greater trochanter, function supination in hip joint. The same function in musculus glu uh, gemellus superior and musculus gemellus inferior or twins muscles, superior and inferior. Also supination in hip joint and the same function in musculus mm, quadratus femoris. Musculus quadratus femoris. It starts from ramus osis ischi and attach in crista intertrochanterica. Supination in hip joint. It is impossible to see musculus obturatorius externus and it also participate in supination. Last muscle it is start from iliac crest start from iliac crest and uh, continues into tractus iliotibialis. We can see this muscle on the corpse that is musculus tensor fasciliata. And with the help of this muscle, we can uh, make flexion in hip joint and flexion in knee joint. Let's go to corp. It is musculus tensor fasciliata, this one and this one that is tensor fasciliata and this muscle continues into uh, tractus iliotibialis that is lateral part of fasciliata that is main fascia of the thigh and uh, with the help of this tractus which goes to head of the fibula and lateral condyle of tibia it's participate in flexion in hip joint and in flexion in knee joint anterior muscles of pelvic girdle it is musculus psoas major start from uh, anterior surface of of the bodies of ilia of uh, lumbar vertebra and the iliac muscle musculus iliacus it starts from iliac fossa these two muscles, psoas major and iliac muscle, they join together and leaves abdominal cavity through lacuna musculorum, that is a space below of inguinal ligament. Here it is. They join together and forms iliopsoas muscle, musculus iliopsoas. Here it is. All of this muscle and this muscle goes to lesser trochanter, trochanter minus, and attached to this trochanter function that is a flexion in hip joint and supination in hip joint. They are muscles of pelvic girdle. Now, muscles of the thigh. Muscles of the thigh 
consists of anterior group, medial group, and posterior group. Anterior group consists of musculus sartorius. This muscle starts uh, from spinaliac anterior superior and attached to medial condyle of tibia and tuberositis tibia. Function. Fle uh, flexion in hip joint, flexion in knee joint, and supination. Next, quadriceps, musculus quadriceps femoris. This muscle consists of four muscles. One of them is rectus muscle, musculus rectus femoris. Uh, next, musculus vastus medialis. It is musculus vastus lateralis, and between them, musculus vastus intermedius. These four muscles join together and forms tendon which is surround patella and below of patella, uh, like ligamentum patella, goes to tuberositis tibia. Musculus rectus femoris. It can uh, participate in flexion in hip joint and whole muscle that is extension in knee joint. They are anterior muscles, now medial muscles. In middle group, first muscle that is pectinus muscle, musculus pectinus. It starts from ramus superiorsis pubis and attach in the region of linea pectina of femur. Flexion and adduction in hip joint. Next, musculus adductor longus, long adductor. Start from pubic bone, attach in the region of linea aspera, medial lip of linea aspera. Function, flexion and adduction in hip joint. Below of this muscle, we can see musculus adductor brevis. It is adductor brevis, that is a long muscle, it is short. The same beginning in pubic bone, attached to labium mediale of linea aspera. Flexion and adduction in hip joint. Next, this muscle. Musculus adductor magnus. Start from ramus inferior osis pubis and ramus osis ischi and attached to lat lateral lip of linea aspera. Extension in hip joint and adduction. And last muscle in this group, that is musculus gracilis. Musculus gracilis. Start uh, the same from ramus osis pubis and attach in medial condyle and tuberositis tibia. Flexion and adduction in hip joint and flexion, flexion in knee joint. And last group, that is posterior group, posterior group. Look here. This muscle is biceps, musculus biceps femoris. It consists of long head, now I take with the forceps, and short head, heat is short head. These two heads join together and tendon of biceps attach in the region of head of fibula. Extension in hip joint, flexion in knee joint and supination in knee joint. This muscle. Musculus semitendinosus. Semitendinosus start from ramus uh, osis is he attach in medial condyle of tibia. Extension in hip joint, flexion in knee joint, and pronation in knee joint. And the same function in last muscle, musculus semimembranosus, heat is. The same start from ramus osis is he, attach in the region of medial condyle of tibia, fle uh, flexion in knee joint and pronation, and extension in hip joint. And some words about topography. You all do know what is it? Who can answer?
frequency. What is it? Inguinal ligament. That is superficial inguinal ring. Here it is uh, inguinal canal. That is a testis. And here it is spermatic cord. Spermatic cord pass through inguinal canal. And now, below of inguinal ligament, space below of inguinal ligament subdivides with the help of arcus iliopictinus. Now, I take this arcus iliopictinus, that is part of fascia iliaca. Iliac muscle supplies with iliac fascia, and this fascia fused with inguinal ligament, and then uh, it leaves inguinal ligament and attached to pubic bone. And name of this place that is arcus iliopictinus. And this arcus iliopictinus subdivides space under the inguinal ligament into two lacuna. Lateral is lacuna musculorum, lacuna musculorum where musculus iliopsoas and femoral nerve leaves abdominal cavity. And medially, medially, this place, that is lacuna vasorum, because vessels, vessels leaves abdominal cavity through this lacuna. Vessel in Latin, that is vas, vas, that is why lacuna vasorum. And uh, here it is, we can see femoral artery and femoral vein, sorry, this one is artery, laterally that is artery, and medially femoral vein. And space medially from femoral vein, that is femoral ring. We discuss with you inguinal rings, superficial and deep. And now we speak about femoral ring, annulus femoralis, femoral ring. Uh, anteriorly and uh, superiorly, it forms with the help of inguinal ligament. Then medially, that is lacunar ligament, ligamentum lacunare, here it is. Ligamentum lacunare. Posteriorly, it is pectineal ligament, ligamentum pectineale, and laterally, it is femoral vein. One again, femoral ring superiorly makes with the help of inguinal ligament, medially lacunar ligament, posteriorly pectineal ligament, and laterally femoral vein. Sometime through this femoral ring, uh, intestine leaves abdominal cavity and goes to tie. In this case, we receive femoral hernia. And if we have femoral hernia, in this case, we will see femoral canal. In normal, femoral canal is absent. But in time of femoral hernia, we can see femoral canal. What is it? Inlet of femoral canal, that is femoral ring. And what is outlet? Here it is, we have fascia lata. Fascia lata, it's surround all of these muscles. And fascia lata, near of inguinal ligament, has two layers, superficial layer and deep. Super, superficial layer in front of these vessels, in front, and deep layer behind. That is why Femoral artery and vein pass in space between superficial and deep layers of fascia lata. And in normal, in superficial layer, we have opening. That is place where vena saphena magna, it is subcutaneous vein. Vena saphena magna, here it is, vena saphena magna. And this vena saphena magna pass through this hiatus saphenus, hiatus saphenus. And in time of femoral hernia, inlet of this hernia, that is femoral ring, annulus femoralis, and outlet of hernia, that is hiatus saphenus. Intestine leaves canal through hiatus saphenus. And now, what is femoral canal? Anterior wall of femoral canal, that is superficial layer of fascia lata, Posterior wall, that is deep layer of fascia lata, and lateral wall, that is femoral vein. Three walls in femoral canal. Anterior wall, superficial layer. Posterior wall, deep layer of fascia lata, and lateral wall, femoral vein. And this part of, uh, of superficial layer, which attached to inguinal ligament, has name superior horn, cornus superior. 
superior horn of superficial layer, that is anterior wall of femoral canal. But this canal we can see only in time of femoral hernia. In normal, on the tie we can see only one canal, that is canalis adductorius. This canal we can see in normal, in everybody. Canalis adductorius, this canal between musculus adductor longus and musculus adductor magnus medially, laterally that is musculus vastus medialis, and anteriorly that is lamina vasto adductoria. It's also part of fascia lata, lamina vasta adductoria. It is anterior wall of canalis adductorius. And uh, femoral vein and artery pass through this canal. They goes into canalis adductorius and then leaves canal and goes to popliteal fossa. What else? The same you need to know femoral triangle, trigonum femoralia, superior wall that is inguinal ligament, lateral wall that is musculus sartorius, and middle wall that is musculus adductor longus. Here, this triangle that is femoral triangle. And in this triangle, we have two grooves. Superiorly, that is sulcus iliopectinus. It has name because it is in space between musculus iliopsos and pectineus muscle. That is why name of this groove is sulcus iliopectinus. And this groove continues into sulcus femoris anterior. It is between musculus adductor longus and musculus vastus medialis, sulcus femoris anterior. That is why vessels, femoral artery and vein, pass uh, below of inguinal ligament through lacuna vasorum, continues into sulcus iliopectinus, continues into sulcus femoris anterior, and then continues into canalis adductorius. That is topography of time. Uh, that is all I want to show you in manual, in your textbook, what you need to prepare. Uh, let's go to my table. Muscles of the tie. Only muscles of the tie, not necessary to read muscles of the leg and foot. Only muscles of pelvic girdle and muscles of the thigh. Thigh. Till here, till page 253. Muscles of the leg, you not necessary to read. You pass these muscles of the leg and foot. Muscles of the leg and foot. And then here it is topography. Faster of pelvic girdle, faster of the tie. And uh, you pass, not necessary to read, fast, uh, fascia of the leg and foot. And then topography. Topography of lower limb, canals and vessels and nerves. Uh, how they leaves sulcus iliopectinus till popliteal fossa. Popliteal fossa you not need to prepare and then continues to read femoral canal femoral canal that is why uh, muscles fascia and topography of pelvic girdle and thigh muscles topography and fascia of the leg and foot next step have you got any questions okay thank you, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.